The fight over the new Arizona immigration law has reignited debate over so-called sanctuary cities that choose to protect illegal immigrants from the authorities. Republican Senators Richard Shelby of Alabama and David Vitter of Louisiana sent a letter to Attorney General Eric Holder expressing concern about a Justice Department program the senators say provides funding to sanctuary cities. It reads, quote, the state criminal alien assistance program is essentially providing room and board for illegal aliens and potential terrorists in sanctuary cities. Localities who hypocritically request SCAAP funding are providing sanctuary and safe havens for criminal aliens. The Justice Department says it is reviewing the letter while a request to reauthorize the program is pending in Congress. Frank Sherry is the founder and executive director of America's Voice. He's also the lead immigration reform negotiator with the White House and Congress. Chris Kobach is a constitutional law professor who co-authored a controversial Arizona immigration law. Prior to that, he was an advisor to former Attorney General John Ashcroft, and he's a candidate for the Secretary of State in Kansas. All right, well, let me start uh, with you, Frank. How many sanctuary cities are there in the country? Zero. Okay, well then let me go right to Chris. Is that true? And if that's true, well, then there, what's there the issue here? This, I'm no, sorry, no, Jake, this, this is a trumped up soundbite on the right. There's Every city in the country hands over serious criminals to the federal immigration authorities for deportation as no. they should. The idea that you know cities are letting people go free who have committed crimes, serious crimes, is wrong. What Chris and his crowd want to do is go after ordinary housekeepers and busboys, drive them out of the country, drive can, them away I, from can local I tell police. You what I want to do? Chris, sure. absolutely, have at it, Hoss. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. In, in, 19, in 1996, Congress passed a statute and Clinton signed it, which says that no city shall prevent its police officers from reporting a person to the feds, their immigration status. That is what a sanctuary city is, a city that prohibits its officers from reporting a person to ICE. There are numerous cities, several dozen cities that qualify, depends if you count a formal ordinance or just a police policy that's not in an ordinance, but the most notorious of which is San Francisco, where they do not allow their police officers to call ICE. And that policy can have deadly consequences, and of course the, the case most people know about is the Bologna family, who in 2008 lost three family members a father and two sons shot in cold blood coming home after a picnic after church one Sunday by an illegal alien that San Francisco had in its custody three times for crimes of violence, but San Francisco never picked up the phone to call ICE because their sanctuary city policy prohibited them from calling ICE. Frank, That's is that, what a sanctuary city is. It, Frank, is that true is in San Francisco? Can they not call ICE if they've got a felon? San Francisco was arguably the only sanctuary city that existed in the country, and after that heinous crime, they rolled back their, their policy so they're no longer a sanctuary city. Look, this policy Me really got its start. Chicago. Hold on, Chris. I'll let you finish. Here, here's what's okay. really, this policy really got its leadership from Rudy Giuliani. Remember the crime-fighting mayor in New York? He realized that if immigrants were afraid to report crimes and serve as witnesses, that ordinary housekeepers and busboys who are in the country illegally would refuse to work with police and it would undercut their crime fighting. So he started the policy that Chris is now calling a sanctuary city policy. All I don't right, think Rudy I, I, Giuliani was soft on actually, crime, was he, Chris? Was uh, he? Was, actually, was Rudy uh, Giuliani the sanctuary, soft on crime? I'll get to that. No, of course not, but let me get let me point that out. The sanctuary city policy in San Francisco, which was the sort of mother of all sanctuary policies, started in 1984, long before Rudy Giuliani ever became mayor. You are correct that New York City did for a while have a sanctuary policy in place, uh, but there are many cities around the country that are breaking federal law. And you, Frank, you're They're arguing America. The Bush idea? administration and the Obama administration have no, no, looked at the it and said no. Clear. They, it's they, they guys, law. guys, Section 1373. Well, it's here's the situation. You law. guys are disagreeing on facts, and there is a real answer to this. What I read was that there are not any sanctuary cities left anymore that won't hand over felons who are immigrants. But you Correct. know what? We can kick it over to PolitiFact. They can decide who's right, who's wrong on that. But, I want to take the rest of the time here to ask both of you. Can we get a compromise here where we say, hey, listen, let's not ask for papers of people with any suspicion uh, like we, East Germany used to is arrested that we should definitely ask if they're legal or illegal uh, in this country. Can you agree to that, Frank? 
look, I'm, I'm willing to agree to it if they're, they're, they've been charged with serious crimes. What I'm not interested in is pretextual arrests against busboys who are driving with broken taillights. That's what the Arizona law would have done. Any stop for any kind of pretextual arrest would have led to people being asked for papers, and the judge was right to say that's unconstitutional and un-American. Okay, so Frank doesn't quite agree. How about you, Chris? <laughs> uh, actually, uh, being familiar with this area and litigating it quite a bit, uh, there's nothing unconstitutional. It's being done all over the country right now whenever someone is stopped for a traffic violation. An officer can, if he wishes, ask into uh, inquire into immigration status. The federal government has a system set up to uh, address those inquiries. All Arizona would have done would have made it mandatory for police officers, not optional for police officers. As for your question, look, you know, sure there are aliens who commit very serious crimes, but, there, but you know, the entry into the United States is itself a crime. It's a misdemeanor the first time, a felony the second time, and there are millions of Americans looking for work. Why in the world would be, we be willing to say, oh, let's turn a blind eye to all the people taking those jobs that our own American citizens would love to have. So I don't think you can say, oh, that's a, that's a low-level crime committing an immigration offense. It has real consequences. Does right, anyone we're, think we're, does we're gonna, anyone think that the Arizona law is the solution? We need Congress to step uh, up and pass comprehensive Frank, reform. Uh, obviously, some people think it's the solution. I might not agree, but obviously, some people do, including Chris. So we're going to have to leave it right there. Frank Sherry and Chris Kobach, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. My pleasure.